Hello and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. This is episode 37? 38, maybe? Um, I am your host, Christy, and I am coming to you a day early. Yes, today is Monday, August 21st, and I normally podcast on Tuesdays, but the um, Yarn Across the Rockies uh, yarn crawl that is huge here in Denver, which is where I live, the Denver area of Colorado, um, that starts right now, uh, today, and tomorrow I have plans with some of my real-life knitting friends to go and tour some yarn shops, and it's going to be kind of an all-day thing, so I knew I wasn't going to have time to podcast. I figured I'd podcast now. And I um, apologize for the lighting, but the solar eclipse is going on right now. Um, we, uh, we've just gone past, what, about, about a half an hour ago, we went past the maximum um, coverage, which for us here was 90%. Um, and so it got dark-ish, not really dark, but just kind of, I don't know, it was kind of creepy looking. Um, and so it's still kind of gloomy outside, um, but it should increase as I'm podcasting. Um, but I've got my my ot light on, which is why there's some weird shadows. <laughs> I can make bunny rabbit. <laughs> quack 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 quack. a little bit weird. Apparently the eclipse has um, affected me. Anyway, <laughs> I've just been outside uh, for the past 45 minutes um, trying to experience the eclipse. Uh, we had some neighbors who had some glasses, so I was able to view it through there, but, um, but there was a lot of sitting and waiting, and so um, we had... it was hot. It's, it's not... I mean, compared to certain parts of the country, it's not hot. It was like, you know, 82 degrees or something like that, but it's humid today, and so just sitting out kind of in this weird half-sun sunlight and um, and then just kind of sweaty, <laughs> you know. So anyway, um, I am going to go through this video. I'm going to go through this podcast without being too weird. At least I'm going to try. I promise I will not make any more shadow puppets. At least not any that I'll show you. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So. Oh, hold on. I forgot something. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have an FO. And it is not my mom's sweater. But I have made progress on my mom's sweater. Positive progress, and things are good, and I am happy. So I'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, my FO is a pair of socks. It is not either of the pair of socks that you saw me working on last week. Because apparently I am like Doug the dog from Up, and I saw a squirrel and I chased it. <laughs> Did a whole different pair of socks. So uh, anyway... Here are said pair of socks. Yay! Look at, aren't they adorable? I am so happy with how these turned out. Okay, so we'll start with the blue one. This is Lolo Did It in the Hippo for Independence colorway. As you know, Lolo, um, Lauren, rather, her name isn't Lolo, although I really wish it was because Lolo is such a nice name. I like names like that. Anyway, Lauren of Lolo Did It. Um, has been doing Hippo for the Holidays colorways all year long, and this is the most recent one. Um, well, as except for the one that she's selling right now, which is Hippo for Dio de las Muertes. Every time I hear that name, Muertes, I think of um, Undercover Blues. Did you guys ever see that movie with um, Dennis Quaid and... Kathleen Turner and Stanley Tucci. Um, if you have not seen that movie, you need to watch it. It is such a good movie. It's um, funny and silly. Unfortunately, uh, nobody has it for streaming right now. I tried to, to bring it up so that I could watch it with my kids, but uh, nobody has it for streaming. So I'm going to have to buy the disc. Um, and I'm not opposed to that. I just like 
streaming things. Anyway, uh, Stanley Tucci's character is Muerte for death, and he's he's supposed to be this bad guy, but he ends up being comic relief most of the time. And um, that was the, the role that made me fall in love with Stanley Tucci. I just thought he was amazing in that movie, and I have loved him in everything since then, even when he's played something that has kind of grossed me out, like the character he played in Lovely Bones. <sighs> um, it's been great, and I absolutely loved him to death in um, what The Imposters, him and Oliver Platt. Oh my goodness, that was such a great movie. So funny. If you haven't seen that movie, you should totally see that one as well. Um, and he was really great in Easy A, where he played um, the dad. And it was a smaller role, but it was, it was great. Anyway, I'm totally getting off subject. So... <laughs> Lola did it. Uh, this is the Hippo for Independence colorway, and I had originally gonna was I and I originally was going to do like a red toe and a blue heel and a red cuff, and then on the second sock a blue toe, a red heel, and a blue cuff. But I decided to just make one blue sock and one red sock. So on this one, the um, the contrast that I used is um, a little Lolo in. Uh, Betty Davis eyes, which is not the perfect blue. Um, it would have been better to go with something a little bit more saturated, a little darker, but I didn't have that, and I wanted to kind of use up this leftover little Lolo that I'd had that I'd used for other socks. So um, I went ahead and used this one, and you can see I did my regular uh, toe-up recipe. started with the Turkish heel. No. I started with the Turkish toe cast on, and then I did a fish lips kiss heel, and then I did uh, ten, 10 rows of one by one ribbing, and then I pulled out, uh, actually I carried the, the hippo for independence up uh, along the side as I did, and then did two rows with the, the hippo for independence and finished on a um, Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off. And so I have just a little little accent of the hippo for independence here at the top, which I like a lot. And then for the red sock, which is actually my favorite of the two, uh, because this red was the perfect red to um, to pair with this hippo for independence colorway, I used sriracha, uh, which is also a little lolo and is such a good red, a a true true red red. And I did the exact same thing. Um, and I love how I love how the red sock brings out the red in the Hippo for Independence, and then the blue sock brings out the blue. I absolutely love how these turned out. I was originally going to make these into um, shorty socks to go along with the previous two Hippo uh, colorways that I have done, um, Hippo for Easter and Hippo for Cinco, but... Um, but I liked this so much that I, I knew I wanted these to be taller because I am kind of limited um, with the shorter socks when the weather turns cold because I end up wearing taller shoes. Um, so these ones I can wear with chucks. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I might even be able to wear these with some of my Doc Martens. So there you go. That is my F.O. It's the only F.O. I have. Um, and I knit those in like two and a half days. I just, I decided I wanted to just cast on uh, because I was starting to feel a little pressure um, with needing to get the rest of the, um, the rest of the socks that I have to do for the cows for August done. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just cast this on and get the toe started and then, you know, it'll be fine. And I ended up just knitting an entire foot and on for the red sock and then I was like okay well I'll go ahead and cast on the blue one too because I have these extra needles and and then it'll be ready to go because uh, I find that once a project is started um, I, I I'm a lot more inclined to pick it up and knit on it uh, if I'm not where well I was gonna say if I'm not excited about it but I was excited about those it's it's that um, I sometimes will be like, well, you know, I don't really have the the time to or the ability to focus on, you know, casting on a toe or casting on a project. So I will um, 
I'll just, you know, not do it um, at that time. Whereas I, if I have it started, I can get it cast on and if I have it start, whereas if I have it started, then I can go ahead and just pick it up and start working on it, especially with a, with like a vanilla sock. I, if I have the toe already gone, then all I have to do is, is just knit stockinette in the round for however many inches I need to, and so I can easily do that during anything, um, even long red lights sometimes, which I am prone to do from time to time. I'm going to see if I can move around and change some of this glare. Hopefully that is better. I do ask you to <laughs> please ignore the tools <laughs> that are on this bed, um, but I did ask Ron to uh, put up some shelves here. Um, I collect books um, more than I collect yarn, and mostly that's because I can get books for cheaper than I can get yarn. Um, and so I have run out of bookshelf space. So I, I bought some a new bookshelf at Ikea and some some hanging shelves and so he has been working on that but we've been having some problems apparently I didn't pay attention to um, to whether or not these would be book holding appropriate shelves to hang on the wall and they're not so anyway he hasn't put the tools away yet because we haven't decided exactly what we're gonna do with it but I do have one shelf um, hanging on my wall I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of it with my phone right now and then um, I will post that picture here. Is this meta? There's a picture of me taking. That's a, that's me taking a picture of the shelves. And then I will um, I'll kind of take a picture of my other bookshelves so you can kind of see how this room is set up. And then I'll send it send it to you, or I'll I'll post it there. And that picture I'm taking right now. That's a photo that, or the painting that my brother made for me. Um, so yeah, so there you go. That's my entire library. I don't know why I felt the need to do that. I'm telling you, the eclipse is messing with my brain. Okay, so that's all the FOs that I have. Um, I do have some whips. Um, I did not work hardly any on my friend's sock. Um, the, the one that, um, that I'm doing out of uh, the stashable in New Zealand yarn. Um, I, I figured I needed to focus on the ones that I had for, um, for my deadline, uh, because August is ending. Um, what, today is the 21st, so I have like a week and three days left. And I, as I said, I was starting to feel um, anxiety about getting those socks done in time, and um, I knew that my friend would understand if I needed to finish her socks in the first couple of days of September. Um, I now feel a lot better that I've gotten one pair completely done, um, the hip of her independence socks done, and then I am halfway through the other two pairs that needed to be done. So let me show you those. Um, I, I, this is mostly done. Of course, I am missing a heel, as you can see, but, um, but this is my Desert Vista Dye Works entry for August for their sock, sock knit along. Um, I have knit a pair of Desert Vista Dye Works socks every month for the year, and I plan on continuing through the rest of the year. I have decided, though, that, that I'm only going to do this for this year. Um, I have enjoyed this knit along, but, um, but I feel like it's a little bit too restricting for me. Um, I don't, I haven't minded knitting any of these socks. I've liked all the Desert Vista Dye Works socks that I have knit, but I feel a little bit of pressure to have to knit this brand of yarn every month um, because there's all these other sock yarns that I have. So I kind of like uh, Kristen at Bull and Vine Yarns um, or at Yarngasm Podcast, who has, you know, her box of socks where you just knit any sock, any pattern, any yarn, as long as it's socks for you. Um, so I think I will continue doing that knit along next year, and uh, I will only do this one for this year. But this has been a great experience so far, and I have really enjoyed it. Um, so anyway, tangent. Um, so this is their Viso base, and the colorway is Emeralds, Sapphires, and Prints, 
and as you can see I have the first sock all done except for the heel. Um, this little sheepy progress keeper is to show me which side the heel goes on and then these two progress keepers I don't know if you can see the little um, light bulb progress keepers there that's where the heel will go. So I have that done and I did decide to go ahead and start the second sock before I did the heel so I have that done just a little bit past the um, past the toe. I have eight and a half repeats to do on the striping pattern for the entire sock and I am about one and a half repeats in so you know, I've got quite a bit left to go but um, but I should be able to finish it pretty soon. Um, I am only focusing on these socks for the rest of the month. Um, these and the other pair that I have to finish for the knit alongs. Uh, so I won't be working on anything else for the rest of the month until these are done. So I should be able to get them done in plenty of time. I'm actually hoping to have them both done before the before I podcast next week. Uh, and I am holding this, carrying, keeping this in my Erin Lane Sheeple Doctor Who bag, um, which I love. Um, I do really like the bags that have the the peekaboo window in them. They're fun. Uh, the other one that I have is uh, one that I just started, and I already have the first sock finished. Uh, well, except for the heel, of course. This is out of Blueberry Pie Studios in um, in her 8020 base, and the colorway is my box of crayons, which is a very nice rainbow. Um, I do like that she went with this kind of aqua or sky blue, maybe, uh, as opposed to you know primary color blue. And this was super duper fun to knit, as I knew it would be. Uh, this is for my box of socks uh, that I mentioned earlier. So this is my August uh, entry for that. And I have, I finished, I, I bound off the first sock last night. Uh, and I will be waiting to do the toe, or do the heel, because um, I have to do, just like with the other, like with the Desert Vista Dye Works, this, um, little uh, uh, progress keeper, my little um, bubblegum ice cream progress keeper from Super Super Miniatures is showing which side the heel goes on and then I have these little um, light bulb progress keepers to show what row I'm going to put the heel in and the heel needs to go on yellow. Um, oh! I am not going to do the toe. Did I say I was going to do the toe next? I'm not. I'm going to do the heel first because I finished on orange. I did that on purpose so that I would be ready to start yellow to do the heel. So I will be doing the heel first and then doing the second sock. So I may have the heel done today. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying those and I am keeping that in my cats in the ocean. Um, uh, you so and so bag, uh, which I absolutely love. So stinking cute. Speaking of cats, we have our cat. I will introduce her to you later on. She's going to hate it. She's not a held cuddle kitty. She doesn't like that. But I will introduce you to her in a little bit. Uh, so next, I have I've worked just a little bit on. If you're new to the podcast, you probably won't even know what this is, but when I first started, when I first started podcasting, I showed this blanket. Now, I have been working on this blanket since 2011, I think. This is the, um, uh, it's called the Beekeeper's Quilt by Tiny Owl Knits, and, um, and as I said, I've been working on this since 2011. In fact, this month is the anniversary of me working on it. So um, it's been six years <laughs> since I started this thing. Um, and you basically, you knit a bunch of these, if you're not familiar with the pattern, and I, I'm sure that you are, everybody is, but you knit, you knit these little hexaflats, um, hexagonal flat pieces that you knit in the round, um, and then you piece them together. And so I had a certain amount done um, a couple of years ago, uh, two years ago, 
and um, and then I just kind of I said, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put together a bunch more. I'm gonna make a bunch more of the hexaplats, and then I'll I'll sew them all on at one time, like I did originally. And I have. I've got gobs of them in here, um, over a hundred, maybe a hundred and eighty, something like that. And so I decided the other day that I was gonna just start attaching them. So I, I don't know if you can tell, but I've got there you can see I got I added this row. Just this single row of like 10, 12 of them. Um, and then I got bored. And I was like, well, I gotta figure out something else. I gotta figure something else out. I'm not really keen on one of the one of the advantages to this pattern was that if you lost um, like if one of the hexaflats got a hole in it, you know, a critter or something got spilled on it, you could just take it out because they're only connected. I don't know if you can probably explain this really bad. They're only connected in the corners. Can you see my fingers poking out? So, um, so you just you know take that one out, replace it with a new one, and tie them in the corners. Um, but I'm not liking how it looks and. I'm noticing that as it's getting heavier, it's kind of pulling. Um, some of these are getting really kind of separated, and so I'm thinking about doing like a whip stitch and whip stitching up along the edges of all of them. Um, but I haven't decided yet. I don't know. I'm just kind of blah about it. I want it to be done. Um, I originally was going to make it into a... I originally was going to make it into a quilt for my bed, um, but but I've since decided just, just like try to make a lap quilt. Um, at this point, I don't even know if I want that anymore. Like, I don't know. I think I I, I think I have lost my love for this project. Really, I don't even I haven't even knit um, a flat in. I think March, February, March was the last time I knit one, and I don't have any interest in knitting anymore. I I still want a scrappy blanket, but I think I want to do like a crocheted one. I don't know. It's just not not appealing to me anymore. But maybe if I sew them together properly with a whip stitch, that that will help. Plus, some of them are coming unraveled, which bums me out. Like this one. This one's coming unraveled. Look at that. Oh well. Anyway, so I did, I just wanted to kind of show you, I did work on that a little bit. My daughter just texted me about the eclipse. That was so cool! This is the first eclipse that I've experienced. Well, solar eclipse. I mean, I think the last one was in 1979 and I was two years old, so I, um, I haven't experienced one. Um, so I think it's really great that my kids got to see one as kids, and their schools did really big things to, you know, had glasses and everything for them to view it. So I think that's really cool. Um, okay, let's get back to my knitting. Uh, mom's sweater. Thank you so much, everybody who um, wrote me uh, a comment on YouTube or sent me a message through Instagram or through Ravelry um, with a suggestion on what to do with my sweater. I, I really appreciate all of those suggestions. Uh, they, they would have been amazing help if I hadn't been able to go to my yarn shop and find the exact purple. <laughs> right there on the shelf. It was amazing. I wasn't, so So Tuesday, last Tuesday was kind of a busy day. Uh, as I mentioned in my podcast last week, we became homeowners and cat parents um, in the same, in the same day. I was going to say cat, cat owners, but um, let's be real. You don't own the cat. The cat owns you. <laughs> Um, and so I, by the time we got back home after signing the papers on the house and with the cat, 
it was late. I was hungry. I had put something in the crock pot, um, a pork roast in the crock pot, because I knew that the day was going to be busy and I wasn't going to want to make dinner. And so it was ready by the time we got home. And uh, it was right around the same time that I would leave for knit night. And I, I didn't want to. <laughs> and I wanted to eat this, the yummy smelling pot roast. Um, so anyway, I... Um, I wasn't going to go. And then I got a message from one of the friends at the knit shop who is doing my sock pattern and she was ready to start the heel and she was hoping that I would show up so that I could help walk her through it. So I went ahead and went to knit night and I figured, well, if I'm going to go, I'll take my sweater and maybe somebody at knit night will have some suggestions or they can help me pick out a purple color. And, um, and so we walked along the, um, the shelves and found the exact right purple color. Look at that. Can you tell? Can you tell there's a difference? You can't, can you? Isn't that awesome? I'm so excited. So, um, the yarn is Wonderland Yarns, and it's their Mad Hatter base, which is sport. So I held it double. Um, and I ripped back about two rows of the ribbing, um, or not the ribbing, the, uh, uh, the cable pattern so that um, I could kind of fade it in um, and I did that but you really you cannot tell the only way that you can tell the difference is that the um, Wonderland yarns is a commercially spun yarn so it's very even um, and it's a little bit shinier than um, than the hand spun but really the colors are exactly the same so, um, so yeah, I, I switched right about there. Anyway, um, so I went ahead and, and finished up the cable part, and then I asked my mom what she wanted to do for the edging, which, as you can see, is just three, three garter rows, um, so six rows of garter stitch. And uh, she asked, she said to just do whatever I felt was best, and I thought since the sleeve ribbing is done, uh, in the red and then the bottom of the sweater ribbing is done also in the red and the button band would be done in the red that it would be good to kind of just frame the entire sweater in the red so I did it in the red and I think it looks really good um, and so all I have left to do now is uh, the button band the sweater is is all complete I have the button band, oh, and, um, and all of these ends to be in. A bunch on the sleeves and a bunch, um, right here. If I had been smarter, I really should have thought about this, I would have knit this entirely in the round and steeked it. And then I would have had all of these ends, at least, in the steek. And I would have just been able to cut them off but I didn't think about that. It's been a long time since I steeped a sweater, but, uh, but I have done that before uh, with a stripy sweater and it worked out perfectly. Um, so, so yeah, so I do have all of these ends to weave in, but I'm just gonna, you know, work on it here and there. Now that I'm really close to being done, I'm, they don't feel such a pull, uh, such a, a push to, to get it done right away. Um, Mom still can't wear it. It's still in the 90s uh, back home, and so I know that the button band won't take me very long, so I'm taking the rest of August off to um, uh, from the sweater to uh, finish up my socks, and then I will do the button band and weave in those ends. And I she wants the buttons to be kind of... Um, to, uh, to meld in uh, and not just detract from all the colors in the sweater. So I'm just going to get the buttons in red uh, and they'll just kind of be like Heidi buttons because um, they'll, they'll look the same color as the button band. And I'm keeping that in my you so and so purple rain clouds rainbow um, bag. This is the jumbo size and I absolutely love this bag. And that is all that I've been working on this week. Um, so next week you should definitely, definitely see some finished socks. Uh, two, at least two pairs of finished socks. But I am hoping that I'll be able to finish 
the two, um, the Desert Vista Dye Works and the Box of Crayons socks before and then also finish my friend's socks. Um, I think that that is just about doable or at least be really close to finishing my friend's socks before the end of August. Uh, and that is all the socks that I'm going to be getting done for August uh, and then next week I will show you the socks that I plan on knitting for September. Um, I am not going to pull out as many socks as I have been. I think I've been pulling out like five or six different skeins of yarn uh, for socks. I'm not going to do that for September because I feel autumn coming and I want to knit all the sweaters right now. <laughs> I really, really, really want to knit sweaters. Um, and it doesn't help that I'm watching podcasts and they're knitting sweaters and I'm like, ooh, I want to knit that sweater and that sweater and that sweater. So I definitely want to be able to focus on that um, for the fall. So expect to see uh, a couple of flax sweaters, uh, which I am planning on knitting for my daughters out of some leftovers that I have from my um, my uh, Lakeshore cardigan. And then I, or not cardigan, but pullover. And then I am also planning on finishing up my pavement sweater um, and having that finished. Um, and then I will be knitting a so faded sweater. I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of what my 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 initial goals are for sweaters. And um, I know that at the beginning of the year I had said that I was planning on knitting 12 sweaters for this year. And originally they were just going to be 12 adult sweaters. Um, but I have decided that the two sweaters that I'm going to knit for my kids, I am going to count in that count. So so when I finish my mom's sweater, that will be five sweaters so far for this year, uh, including when I include my pavement, the one for Tatum, the one for Delaney, and the So Faded, that's nine. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to put together another two sweaters, uh, or three, three sweaters, three sweaters. Yes, I'm an accountant. <laughs> I can really do math, honest. Um, and then I will have 12 sweaters for the year. I might do another one for the girls, uh, depending on how much they take to it, because one of the reasons why I haven't really knit them a lot of sweaters uh, is because they don't really wear them, and I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much money on yarn and whatnot, and then and then time and energy. Um, you know, I should take that back. I did make Delaney this card again a couple of years ago, and she wore it to death. In fact, she outgrew it and still wanted to wear it. Um, but, uh, but there's been other things that I've made that they just didn't care for. A lot of it has to do with making it sure it's the right color and the right, um, base in the yarn. Um, not, Tatum is, has very sensitive skin to itching things, scratchy things, and so I cannot make her anything that isn't soft next to the, super next to the skin soft, uh, because she'll just, it'll just itch her and then she won't wear it. Um, which is why the cowl and gloves and hat that she has out of Cascade 220 just sit because she can't wear them. They just make her scratch. So anyway, okay, so that is all of the works in progress that I have. I do have some yarny goodness to show you. I have some yarn haul. I should show you this first. Um, this is the yarn that I got to finish my mom's sweater. Um, and as you can see, I still have quite a bit left over, um, at least a half a skein. So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for, but maybe edging on a hat or something like that. It's sport weight, so I can't really use it for socks, but, um, but I could make it into a hat. This is probably Delaney's favorite color, so maybe I'll make something for her out of it. But yeah, I have, I have that left over. And then when I was at the shop, picking up the purple yarn for my mom's sweater, I, well, if I'm completely honest, I couldn't go to the yarn shop and buy yarn that wasn't for me. I mean, I could buy yarn that wasn't for me, but I had to buy yarn for me as well. Like, I had to add that in. <laughs> my yarn shop, my local yarn shop, is uh, Colorful Yarns and Centennial, and the owner, Tiffany, is fantastic about getting indie dyers. 
she just she, she searches them out. She finds somebody that she thinks is interesting, uh, that has good product, and then she contacts them about um, providing yarn for her shop. And so it's a great place to go if you want to check out Indie Dyers. She has yarn ink, she has hedgehog fibers, she has um, Wonderland yarns, she has spun right round, um, chasing rabbits, what else? Oh gosh, there's there's so much, so many different indie dyers, and she's constantly getting new ones. Um, so so yeah, if you are ever in the Denver area, then do stop by Centen uh, Colorful Yarns in Centennial. Um, it's it's great. That it's not the biggest shop, it's not the most popular shop, um, and there are lots of shops in the area, but that is, I think it's it's the best yarn shop I've ever been in, honestly. Uh, so anyway, one of the new indie dyers that she got is uh, Stray Cat Socks, which is from New Zealand. And she does uh, self-striping sock yarn, and she does it in the, um, in the everlasting gobstopper balls, right? Uh, so I picked up two, because <laughs> I couldn't decide between the two. Uh, this one is all... This one is Are We There Yet? And it is, um, you got a, just the perfect orange. This is my favorite shade of orange. Uh, purple, yellow, pink, green, and blue. Almost rainbowy, um, And it's just gorgeous. I, I did... I, it would it would be the absolute perfect sh uh, colorway if it didn't have the pink stripe in it, but um, but all the other colors help me to ignore the pink stripe. Um, and really, this orange man, gosh, I love that shade of orange. Yeah, it's almost exactly the same same shade as my shirt. Uh, the other one I got is this one, which is called Revolution, and it is three different tones of gray and red, and I'm super excited about this. I love when there's like one pop of an uber bright, brilliant, saturated color, and that's exactly what this is. I'm so excited about these socks, and I'm really trying to be responsible and not cast them on right away because um, I have responsibilities, and, um, and I don't even think I can cast them on in September because I already have socks picked out for September. Um, I won't show them to you yet because um, I will I'll wait till next week, but, um, but I do already have them picked out. Um, and then that was all that I was going to get. I was like, okay, well, I've got something to show on the podcast, and I've got a little bit of new sock yarn. That'll be great. I'll be, I'm good. But then I got an email from Madeline Tosh saying that they were having a sale. And I just couldn't, uh, couldn't pass up on the sale. So I got some more yarn. Um, I got this skein, which is in her um, Long Rider DK, which is DK with some nylon in it, uh, and the color weight is called Brass. And I got this thinking it would make a really great hat or put together in a shawl. I know that um, Mina Phillips, I think it's Mina Phillips, is doing a um, is doing a, a DK mystery shawl. Um, I am not going to participate in a mystery shawl cow, uh, any mystery shawl cow, because I'm really particular about the shawls that I want. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of just starting to love shawls and see a purpose for them um, here in the wintry wonderland that is Denver, Colorado. Uh, however, so I, so I just don't, I don't think that I would I. I don't think that I would enjoy a mystery knit along for shawls. I the the past couple that I've seen, like uh, Hohi Locatelli's and uh, Helen Stewart's, they the, neither of them I would have wanted. Um, and so yeah, I'll just wait until they're done. I know that, as I said, Mina Phillips, uh, the knitting expat, and then um, and then Andrea Mowry uh, of the Snow Faded Sweater and Find Your Fade Shawl is doing another faded shawl um, uh, knit, you know, pattern, but it's also a mystery knit along, and I am going to wait. I actually feel like I'm probably be more keen to do that one uh, than Mina Phillips uh, because Mina's is, um, is a crescent shawl, and I'm 
more about kind of what's it called um, irregular sized shawls so anyway but I have it I, I think it's a great colorway I love this you know like mustard brown or yellow orange uh, speckles and then I love the, the yellow of the base so um, so if nothing else it'll be a hat and then speaking of yellow, I also got this brightness. Uh, this is Twist Light Sock, which I have knit into socks before. I really like this base. And the colorway is Bananas, and it is just, you know, like, yellow. It's yellow. So um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with this. I, I just know that I don't have very many solids in fingering weight yarn. So I may make myself some socks. I may use this for heels, toes, and cuffs on other socks, I may knit this into a shawl. I just don't know yet, um, but I wanted it, and I love this color, so there you go. And then lastly, I got this, and I was just drawn to the color, the colorway, um, and I didn't really have any plans. I figured I would just make it into socks, but I don't think I'm going to anymore, and that is their work sock base um, in the colorway Bright Eyes, and I love all the colors in this. you got some purple and yellow and red orange and then this beautiful um, like teal blue. Love that shade of blue. And then there's like black speckles all throughout it. Um, the reason why I'm not going to use this for socks is because this is almost a sport weight. It's, it's really, in fact, I think it is well, they say heavy, heavy fingering slash sport weight. I really would say this is sport. So, um, so I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with it. Some kind of accessory. Uh, I almost thought that I would use this to pair with it, but the purples aren't quite right. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to have to find something else to pair with this, and I'll probably make. I don't know, but it's pretty. So, until I find exactly what I want to make with it, it it will be something that I can admire and pet. And that is all the yarn that I have to show you. So um, let's go ahead and talk about life stuff and books. Um, I don't have a lot of life stuff to talk about. Nothing's really happened. I mean, last week was big, but I've already talked to you about those. Uh, we have made it through our first week as as homeowners and um, and have survived, and we have made it through our first week as cat parents and have survived that as well. Although it has been a little trying. Um, let me go get lo let me go get the cat, and uh, then I'll talk to you more about it. Hang on just a second. This is Lilu. No, she is not a snuggle up on your lap cuddle kitty. She tolerates it for just a moment, and then she wants to go. But I wanted to introduce her to you so you guys could see her and uh, now I will put her down and I'll talk about her more. So if you recall from last week, uh, Lilu was originally named Barbara. We decided to change her name um, and <laughs> to all the Barbaras out there, I got a comment from a Barbara. I, I hope nobody took offense to that. I think Barbara is a great name for a person. I just don't think it fit the cat very well. So we went ahead and went with Lilu, which is from the Fifth Element, um, and and I just it, it fits pretty well, I think. Uh, she is a good cat. She um, she's a little bit too smart for her own good, I think. And she did take a little bit of time to kind of adjust to um, to having a home again. The first night was really hard. She cried all night long. She, you know, rawr, rawr, really loud. Um, just kind of yowled all night long, all throughout the house. We didn't get very much sleep. Um, and I did some research and we've taken some, some steps to kind of offset that. Uh, one is that we're making sure that she gets fed twice a day. She gets fed in the morning um, and then right before we go to bed. And so that helped. And then she's also getting lots of attention during the day. Uh, the girls are playing with her. We get lots of toys. And she likes the laser light pointer the best. Um, but she's also getting lots of love every time we, you know, 
walk past her and whatnot. We make sure that we give her some little love. Now, she, as I said, she doesn't like to be, she doesn't want to sit on your lap. She doesn't want to be snuggled like that and carried around, but she does like to be pet. So if you go to her, or if you're walking by her, um, then she likes to be pet. And, um, and she will, you know, rub up against your legs, especially if you're in the kitchen. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so it's, it's going well. Um, she's using the litter boxes she's supposed to. She's not really getting into things that she shouldn't. For the most part, she has completely ignored my yarn. She has no interest in my yarn, which is good. That was one of my concerns. Um, but uh, but she has tried to sharpen her claws on um, the rug that we have underneath the dining room table and that kind of thing. And so we've we've gotten her a cat scratching post and a like a cat thing, you know, that they can climb on and play with. What are those called? Tower. Um, so she has those and, um, and lots of toys, as I said, um, and we've gotten treats and that kind of thing. Uh, she did steal our bread. Um, Tatum woke up one night and saw her taking a partial loaf of bread and hiding it under Delaney's bed. Um, and then we found later on the next day that she had taken another partial loaf of bread. As I have different bread for the kids, sandwiches and, and then Ron likes specific bread. He likes sourdough and rye, whereas the kids just have wheat. Um, and she had taken the wheat bread loaf and kind of hidden it behind the couch and was taking bits of it here and there throughout the day. So um, she's a little stinker that way. But, uh, but other than that, she's been a really good cat and, um, and she's a nice addition to our family. Um, so yeah, so it's worked out really well. I did kind of hope that she would be more snuggly. Um, I, you know, I've longed to sit down and, and read or lay down and read or knit and have a cat on my lap. And Lilu doesn't seem to be that cat. Right now, we're wondering if maybe things will change when it gets colder. But, um, but yeah, that's okay. You know, she's still, she's still a good cat and she's sweet to have around and we like her. So anyway, that is the cat. And now we'll get into the books. I finished The Shining um, and we started watching the miniseries and it has uh, Stephen Weber and Rebecca De Mornay in it. Um, and it's okay. It's a lot closer to the book um, than the one with, than the Stanley Kubrick movie, but um, the, the dialogue is really bad and the acting is it's kind of overacted, I think. Um, but, you know, that's the way it goes. It is closer to the book. We haven't gotten to the scary bits yet. It's just, uh, Jack has just started to get weird. Um, and so we will probably take us all week to watch it because Ron has to get up early in the morning for work and so we won't have time. We can't watch it with the kids awake so we have to wait, till them to go, wait for them to go to bed and and there isn't always enough time so like we didn't watch any of it last night but we'll get through it and um, and yeah I'm really glad that I got it on Amazon instead of buying it from the Stanley Hotel because it's it's okay having spent six or eight dollars on it um, when it's got bad dialogue and acting but um, if I had spent twenty five dollars on it I would have been upset but I did finish that, and so I decided to pick up this novel, which is called *The Creeping* by Alexandra Sarari. Sarari. Um, and this is a, another thriller. Two girls go missing, and one dies, and one comes back, but she has no memory of what had happened. And uh, she's now 17. They were like, I don't know, nine, eight, maybe, when it happened, and now she's 17, and. Um, and there's been another body, and so she's she's decided that she really needs to find out what happened to her back then, and um, and yeah, I'm excited about it. I haven't gotten very far; I'm only about 40 pages in. It is a YA thriller, and normally YA thrillers leave something to be desired, but I I have heard good things about this one, so I'm hoping that it'll be good. Um, and then, as far as 
audiobooks, I have been listening to this duology um, by Ram Simsian, um, and this is The Rosie Project, uh, which was the first book, and then The Rosie Effect. And this is the story about a genetic scientist who is on the autistic spectrum. Um, it, they label it Asperger's uh, in the book, but I know that Asperger's is kind of has kind of become nothing. It's like now you're just on the autistic spectrum. So, um, so he is high functioning, obviously, but he has social issues. He doesn't read social cues, and he's decided that he, at you know, 39, should get married, and he's come up with a a, a full um, list of questions that prospective. Um, wife, prospective wives could answer and then he would just go off of um, the one that, that meets all the criteria and that's the one he's going to marry. Like, there's no love involved, it's just this is very scientific. Um, however, he meets this girl Rosie, this woman Rosie, who does not meet any of the criteria. Um, however, he's helping her with a different project and um, he is finding that even though she doesn't meet any of the criteria and she does things that drive him crazy, he can't stop thinking about her. And it's a cute book and I really enjoyed it. I listened to it on audio and it is an Australian book so it is the narrator has an Australian accent um, and it was enjoyable. I liked it. Um, and so I was excited about reading the second book, The Rosie Effect, but I'm a little, I'm about halfway through, and I'm really finding that it's just, it's kind of like this, only watered down. Um, like the same, same kind of issues, uh, he gets in the same kind of trouble, he makes the same kind of um, misunderstandings, and, um, and yet this one is, like the misunderstandings are more serious, have a more serious consequence, and I'm, I'm not really enjoying it as much. If I didn't, if I had another audiobook to listen to, um, I would probably DNF this one. It's not bad, but I'm just not enjoying it as much. So, so there's that. But I do really recommend The Rosie Project. It was, it was really cute and funny. Um, and if you do like audiobooks, I would recommend it on audio. It was very enjoyable to listen to. So, uh, so yeah, that's basically all that I am reading and uh, all that I'm knitting, and I've introduced you to the cat, so I think that I have um, completed this podcast. So um, I am going to go downstairs and eat some lunch, and then I'm going to edit, probably while I'm eating lunch, and I'm going to answer that text message that I just got. And uh, yeah, so I hope you have a wonderful evening. Um, happy knitting, and I will see you next week. Bye.